morning, children of God. Welcome to worship. Is that coming through okay? Not really? I possibly need to do batteries. One moment. <laughs> can, you, can you hear it okay? Okay. Okay, we'll try that. <clears throat> Let me know if you have trouble hearing, as if you can tell me when you have trouble hearing. <laughs> Welcome to worship today. This is an exciting day because it's Reformation Sunday. We celebrate the beginning of the, of the Lutheran Church or the Protestant Church, the re re reformation of the Catholic Church. Um, we have a lunch afterwards, which everyone's invited to, and that should be delicious. I see people wearing red. It's just a really cool day. Um, announcements in the bulletin. Uh, we are still doing the food pickup on the third Thursday of the month. Um, Jack and I will be gone starting tomorrow. We'll be gone for about two weeks. Uh, time changes next week, so you can roll your clocks back an hour and gain a little more sleep. Uh, the men's Bible study will be on hold until after we get back. Um, yeah, and our harvest dinner, uh, we will still have confirmation while we're gone, thanks to Emily. And um, I want to thank Ben for being our cameraman to, for the next couple weeks, so appreciate his help there. Any announcements I need to mention? Okay, this is amazing and awesome. Let's begin our worship then at the end on uh, page three in the bulletin with the confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together, let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend, amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn is 504.
please stand as you're able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The prayer of the day is found on the front of the Celebrate insert, and there are two prayers, and I've chosen the second one, and I'm not sure what's on the video, so I apologize if that's different. But anyway, so let's join together in the prayer. Gracious Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth and peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is an error, Direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in need, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be. Our first reading this morning is from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities, and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read the psalm uh, responsibly and repeat the refrain at the bold R. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. <clears throat> it shall not be shaken. God will help it in the break of day. The nations <clears throat> rage and the kingdoms shake. God, God speaks, speaks and, and the, the earth, earth melts, melts away. away. The Lord, the Lord of hosts is with us. us. The, God the God of Jacob is our stronghold. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come okay. now, regard, regard the works of the Lord. Lord. What but desolations, desolations God, God has brought on the earth. Behold, the one who makes war to ease in all the world, 
who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Our second reading is from the third chapter of Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. <clears throat> for there is no distinction, since we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, they are now justified by the grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins pre previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then, what becomes a boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. We begin with the gospel acclamation in the middle of page five in the bulletin. Alleluia. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Alleluia. The gospel according to John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Kids like to come up? Good, good. Do I get a high five? Thank you. All right. Okay. Now, we're called the Lutheran Church, and we're named after a man named Martin Luther. Martin Luther was a monk, he was a, he was Catholic, but he didn't like some of the things the Catholic Church was doing. So he wrote what they called 95 Theses, and this is a book about Luther's Theses. Theses? Um, that's a funny word, isn't it? But basically it was a, a paper or a, a parchment that had 95 points that he wanted to discuss. And it was a typical way of communicating in those days to take something like that and to post it, and I'm not sure if he wrote it in Latin or German, but he would post it so that 
people could see it and read it, and they would get together and they would discuss these points. Now, a lot of it had to do with the church selling indulgences. Have you ever heard of that? Well, they were trying to, the Catholic Church at the time was trying to build their, their huge cathedral, and in order to raise money, they came up with the idea that if people would buy indulgences, that would cover some of their sin. Now, that's not in the scriptures. That was just strictly their idea of a fundraiser. <laughs> um, but some of the things, uh, like it, um, number 21 talks about it, and so these indulgence, uh, indulgence preachers err, or they make a mistake, when they say that though the, through, that through the pulp's indulgences, a person is released and saved from every penalty. Well, that's just not true. Scripture says that the only one that can save us is Jesus Christ. So that was why he posted those 95 theses, and that was what kind of started the Reformation in the Protestant churches. Now, I brought a piece of cardboard, and it's not exactly a you know, parchment like Luther used, and he probably didn't have a Sharpie. But I thought we would write down, oh, I don't know, four or five questions we have about God, and then we'll post them on the door. I've got some, I'm sure he didn't have tape either. Do you have a question about God? Well, I always wondered, how old is God? So I'll put that down. What's another question? How does he make things? Good one. The others? Do you ever wonder if your pet goes to heaven? I wonder too. Do you have any questions? Not yet? You will someday. What does God look like? probably fit on one more question. Anybody else? And that's okay. We've got five. How long is God alive? Well, Jesus and me. Okay. How long do you think? Jesus was alive all the time because he helped create the world, yeah. But he lived on earth for about three years. Well, not three years, about 33 years. He preached for about three years. Excellent questions. Aren't they amazing, guys? Okay, now let's go find a door we're going to... Now, Luther would have probably nailed it. I mean, that, you know, he nailed it, yeah. He would nail it with a hammer and, and nails. Um, but we're going to use tape. Because I don't think people want us nailing on the doors here. You want to come with me? Help me pick out a door. Everybody coming? I didn't lose anyone. Hi, Nash. <laughs> what do you think about this door? Does that look like a good one to put this on? Should we do that? Okay. You want to hold that for me for a minute? Um, come on over here then. Hold it up here. You want to put some tape on it, Hadley? Like maybe a piece of tape right here or down here? Oh, this. <laughs> there you go. You're getting it. 
That was kind of a high reach for you. Thank you. We could probably put a couple more pieces on. Yeah. You're welcome. You want to put a piece of tape on? could put it like right here. Can you put it right here? That's right. Good job. Did everybody get to tape it? So those are our questions about God that we have. And as you grow, you'll have more and more questions. Now, what I think is an, another thing I think is interesting to think about is that um, Luther was pretty technologically ahead of his time. He, the printing press had just been invented, and he was able to use the printing press in, in uh, printing the Bible. He, wrote, he rewrote the Bible from Latin into German, and he had a lot of, um, like his small catechism, and a lot of things that he wrote that he was able to print up and then mass produce. So you, you think about, wow, that was pretty advanced in those days, but that was like the 1500s. Imagine what it would be like for Luther nowadays We'd be posting things on Facebook and, you know, maybe um, putting, maybe you'd have, even have a, a face or a you, uh, YouTube videos or a, a you know, page. I mean, it's, it's just amazing to think how that could change the Reformation and the, and the looks of the church. Would you guys like a treat? No? Okay, well, let's have a prayer uh, right where we're at, and then I'll get the treats, okay? <laughs> Okay, let's pray. Ready? Dear Lord, thank you for this awesome group of kids and for all the children of God gathered here. We pray that you just bless them and bless this day. Thank you, Lord, for people like Martin Luther that are willing to make changes in the church so that it can stay true to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Oh, we missed you, didn't we? There you go. And our video man has requested one. Okay. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now with the assistance of such things like Ancestry.com, many people have researched their genealogy and they've learned more about their family history. Some people have discovered that they have like royal connections way back in their family tree. Additional resources are available to us too, like newspaper archives or websites such as Find a Grave. And thanks to genealogy societies and to the internet, we have the ability to look back at this information. Now for the ancient civilizations, like Israel, it was important to know that information and pass it on to the next generation had to pass it forward. We can look back, they had to go forward. So they would pass, you know, who their descendants, who they descended from, you know, down the generations. And that was how they understood who they were and where they came from. That was the information that gave them identity. Now, it was significant in those days and, and may still be in the Mediterranean culture. I, I may find that out. Um, because the cult, that particular culture in which they lived 
families or people were actually considered more groups than individuals. For instance, when people got married, they would move in with the, the husband's family. I mean, the, the families and, and uh, your, your nationalities, all those things were really significant, more so than your own individualism. But in our current culture, of course, we're prone to insulate ourselves and be independent of others. The collective, collectivist personality of the Mediterranean culture meant people felt connected to groups. Now today's gospel lesson is part of a conversation that Jesus had with the Pharisees and other Jews. The verses that come immediately before our reading today are these. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am he and that I do nothing on my own, but I speak these things as the Father instructed me. And the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what is pleasing to him. And verse 30, as Jesus was saying these things, many believed in him. So in verse 31, it says that Jesus is specifically addressing the Jews who have listened to Jesus and have put their faith in Jesus. Jesus explained to these Jews that by knowing and, and by keeping his word, they will be his disciples and they'll know the truth and the truth will make them free. Free? Free? Do we look like slaves, they ask? Of course we are free. We are descendants of Abraham. We have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean be set free? Well, the very idea that we're slaves. Their rent was rather a bold statement considering they were currently under Roman rule. Or did they forget the time that the Israelites were held captive in Babylon? And what about the time when Israel was slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt during the time of Moses? And then there was the Syrians and the Persians, etc. Many centuries ago, the Lord told the Israelites this. It comes from Deuteronomy. In the future, when your son asks you, what is the meaning of the stipulations, decrees, and laws the Lord your God has commanded you? Tell him, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. In other words, Deuteronomy is actually telling the Israelites to tell their children that their ancestors were slaves and that God saved them. But here, in this, in this story in the gospel where Jesus is talking to the Jews, they make an attempt to justify themselves to Jesus. And by, to do that, they identify themselves with the, as descendants of Abraham, aligning themselves with the patriarch of the faith. Now, Gary, Burge, Gary M. Burge explains, from the earliest chapters of the Old Testament, the people of Israel understood the importance of their election. They would be a blessing not only to God, but to other nations. However, the sense of obligation and responsibility that this inspired was eventually replaced with feelings of privilege and protection. What about us? Do we feel entitled because of our ancestors? Does that make us better or worse than someone else? Not in God's eyes. We are all still the same for God. Paul writes, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All people. Every person. Now, I could tell you about my grandfather who served in World War I. He was a lawyer, he was a circuit court judge in Cook County, um, which is Chicago, Illinois, basically. He served at, in the Illinois State Senate, et cetera. And you might think that I was re really someone special and I had, a, you know, had an impressive background. Or I could tell you about my uncle, who was baptized and he grew up in the church, but he became a slave to alcohol and he committed a crime. And then, if I told you all that, you might want to take a step back from me. Now, neither claiming my relationship to my grandfather or my uncle would make a difference in the way God sees me. 
information like that would be important to the Jews because they see people as groups and you're tied back to your relatives. Um, but not in Jesus' eyes. In Jesus' eyes, the Jews' association with Abraham was not an acceptable substitution for knowing Jesus and for believing and following him. Gary M. Burge also says, blood lineage does not guarantee spiritual lineage. Blood lineage, who you are, does not guarantee your spiritual life. Jesus ponders their questions by explaining that everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. He says everyone, no exception. A slave to sin is as much a slave as a person who is sold into slavery. Now, we often use a confession that has this phrase. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. And that bondage to sin is the slavery of sin. Bondage is another way of saying slavery. We just, you know, we confess that we are slaves to sin and cannot free ourselves. Further, we acknowledge that we cannot free ourselves. So we are acknowledging that freedom and forgiveness comes only through Jesus Christ. In the words of Paul, he, verse 24 says, they, meaning from the previous verse, that is all who have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. The problem of being a slave is that you do not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place forever, Jesus says. Now Jesus is referring to having a place in the kingdom of God. If Jesus makes you free, you are really, certainly, surely free indeed. And being freed from bondage to sin means that there is a place for you in the, in the household of God forever. Now the church refers to the last Sunday in October as Reformation Sunday. It's one of the few Sundays where red is our altar color, where the skull is red. And we'll encourage you to, read, to wear red. The other Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Red stands for the Holy Spirit and the mission of the church. We trust the Holy Spirit to guide the mission of Christ Lutheran Church in Davenport. As we care for each other and as we spread the gospel in our communities. And we pray that God will always be present with us every day. And we pray that God will receive the praise and the glory. I'd like to close the sermon using a prayer of Martin Luther's called Protection of the Church. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we see and feel how your church is doing in this world. We see its status and how it is annoyed in so many ways by the world and the devil. So we pray to you for the sake of your only begotten Son. First, comfort and strengthen our hearts by your Holy Spirit, so that we may not be overwhelmed by so many dangers. Also, we pray that you will not only halt the purposes and plans of the enemies, but will truly and marvelously help prove to the whole world that you care for the church. Rule, protect, and deliver it, ever living and reigning eternal God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our hymn 517.
confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's found on page 6 in the bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of intercession are found on the back of the Celebrate insert. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. God our fortress, we pray for the church. Write your law of love on the hearts of your people, that we remain steadfast in our witness to your grace. Hear us, O oh God. God, our liberator, we pray for your earth. Bring new life to overused land and contaminated rivers. Reform and reorient our relationship with the environment, that we faithfully care for all of your creation. Hear us, O oh God. God, our refuge and strength, we pray for the nations. Where they are in an uproar, bring wise leadership and comfort for those in distress. Make wars to cease and peace to enter every land. Hear us, O oh God. God, our very present help in trouble, we pray for those in need. Show mercy to refugees and all fleeing from danger. Shelter any without homes. Calm all who are facing illness, surgery, or a new diagnosis. Especially we pray for Rod and for Irvin and Everett and Adam and Jan and Riley and Carrie and Elijah and Joanne and Brett and Laverta and Howard and Gail and Josh. And Lord, we pray prayers of comfort for the family and friends of Zach Gunner Corman. Hear us, O oh God. God, our Redeemer, we pray for our congregation. Bless all who are preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Open their hearts to your Holy Spirit. Teach them your word and give them courage to proclaim their faith. Hear us, O God. God, our stronghold, we give thanks for those who have gone before us in faith, especially Martin Luther and all reformers. Renew and reform us as we strive to continue in your word. Hear us, O God. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. As you feel comfortable, you may share God's peace with each other.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing, and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may I have my communion helpers? You may be seated. Christ invites you to this table. Come taste and see. side over there, okay? Christ. 
body of Christ given for you. Please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we may serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Our sending hymn is 729.
Yes, we do. 